fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. You got Craig and TK and head that deep tune in at the fish report. Coming to you live Hanging from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio. It's the Fish Hanging Report the Live fish Show report. with your Hanging hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome, everyone, to another Fish Report Live. I'm Craig Fissinger. That is Ken Francis back in our sound room. Of course, it's TK and Heavy D. We'll be joining those two guys here in just a little bit. Ken, I got a question for you. Do you know any other Ohio High School cross-country state championship preview show on the web or on the TV tonight? Absolutely not, Craig. You know, the only one in Ohio, I guarantee you, maybe in the country, is right here on Fish Report Live, Craig. We've got Game 7 of the World Series going on right now. And, uh, you know, <laughs> if I had to bet, their ratings are getting hurt right now because of our absolutely, show. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about that tonight. It's a big race, of course, because it's the state race, and it's also the last race for a lot of seniors around Ohio. We're going to be talking to several of those tonight. Yeah, we are, Craig. Really looking forward to going up uh, north, Craig, and talking to the Fort Laramie. One of their star runners, senior Tom Ballas. Tom's had a great career for the Redskins. Uh, he's first team all Shelby County League again this year, Craig, and uh, he's running a personal and best of 1626, uh, hoping to lead the Redskins to a, to a possible state championship, Craig, and we'll see what he has to say about the Redskins' opportunities come this Saturday. Craig, we're also going to talk to Rushi's seniors, Shea Gubo and Audrey Garrity, two great runners that the Raiders have had over the years, continuing that Rushi uh, tradition in, in cross-country, Craig. Really looking forward to what uh, – they have to say about their excitement they've got coming up this weekend. And also, Craig, we're going to go down to Covington, talk about one of the best runners in the state of Ohio, and that's Anna Dunn, Covington Cross Country senior, Craig, uh, first team all CCC this year again, and uh, she leads her Buccaneers into uh, the state meet this weekend on Hebron. Yeah, a lot of fun tonight, a lot of seniors to talk to, but before we do that, Ken, just like we do every week on this show, we have our weekly poll question, and what do you have tonight? Craig, uh, which of these conferences has had the best combined boys and girls cross-country teams so far this year? Is it the CCC, the MAC, the Ohio Heritage Conference, or the Shelby County Athletic League? Well, all four of those conferences will be well represented this weekend over in Hebron. And uh, if you're watching us on NK Telco uh, or Game Face Ohio, we will have those results for you at the end of the show. If you happen to be watching us on the web right now on the Fish Report Live page, you can scroll down, help us answer tonight's poll question, and check the results. Ken, now we're going to talk, uh, focus mainly on Division Three tonight. We're going to start out talking some boys. I know in Division Two, there's a couple area kids uh, that are, that are going to be representing the uh, uh, their school in Versailles and Joe Spitzer and, and Noah Plyman, they're going to be mm -hmm. running over there. So good luck to them. But let's talk some Division Three and what uh, local teams on the boys' side and some individuals should we be watching for. On the boys' side, Craig, we'll start off with the Fort Laramie Redskins, Craig. They've been ranked top five in the state of Ohio all year, currently ranked number three. Uh, they got a, a great three-pack that leads their team up near the front, Craig, and uh, their four, five, six, seven runners also contribute very well. Uh, so they've been solid all year. The Anna Rockets as well. Um, you know, look for them to, to hope for a top 10 finish over there. And uh, St. Henry and, and Parkway, Craig, also uh, well represented from a team standpoint. Local individuals, Craig, we got uh, Corey Hamlin from Bethel, Cool Good from Franklin Monroe. We've got Gavin Horn from Miami East and Nick Williams from West Liberty. So those are the locals that will be running in the boys' tournament. Yeah, three individuals from the CCC over there and one from the OHC. And, Ken, of course, you mentioned those Fort Army Redskins, and uh, one of their stars this year has been their senior, Tom Ballas, over there, having a very good season, a real key to their success. Been running most of the year as their number three runner, and uh, you know when you compare him to other number three runners in the state, that's where the, the Redskins gain a lot of ground. So uh, we're happy to have him live on the phone right now. Tom, welcome to Fish Report Live, and Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, well, listen, first of all, congratulations on getting to the state meet. Congratulations on your regional championship this past Saturday. You know, 
Tom, we were talking about you guys already last year on this show and, and, and talking about 2016 and what a great team this could be. Uh, tell me, how did you, coming into this season, how did you guys prepare and were there any early expectations for, for how well you could do? Uh, yeah, so our preparation started this uh, summer as with uh, any cross-country season and we sort of got a late start because we had a long track season, which is always good. Um, and our team really, I thought our summer training was probably the best it's ever been. Yeah, we were training like five to six times a week. Uh, Joe Jake and I were, and the other guys were showing up quite a bit too. Oh, we also did Sunday Hills this year, uh, which is something that the Reasons had always done in the past, but the other the rest of the team had it. And those were some really tough workouts, and I think implementing those uh, made our team quite a bit better. And then for the expectations coming into the year, we we put some pretty high expectations on ourselves. We we wanted to be really solid this year, and I feel like up to this point we've really achieved what we've wanted to. All right, well, you mentioned Joe and Jake, and, of course, you're talking about your brother, Joe Ballas, and Jake Raithman. Uh, you know, it was i got to admit, it was kind of cool seeing you guys last Saturday at the finish there, all three of you guys finishing together in the number two, three, and four spots. Has that been typical for you three guys to, to run together all season? Uh, it No, not really, actually. They've actually been kicking my butt most of the year, to be quite <laughs> honest. Uh, but uh, around county, I sort of made a commitment that I was going to try to run with them, or at least be close to them. Because our coach always talks about uh, closing the pack time. And mainly he's talking about four and five, closing the pack to a minute on one. But I thought if I could close the pack to like 10 seconds, that would make our team a lot better. And getting it down to half a second at regional, I was definitely uh, pretty fired up about that. Tom, hi, this is Ken. Uh, we mentioned uh, Jake and Joe, as well as yourself, being the top three runners. But like any good cross-country team, it takes uh, five, six, seven guys to complete the team. Who else have you got uh, running for the Redskins there this weekend that will that'll, uh, increase your chances of, of winning a state championship? Um, so our number four runner is Noah Siegel. Uh, he's a junior. Uh, Noah's probably the toughest kid I've ever, like, toughest runner I've ever ran with. Uh, he sets really high goals for himself, and he just goes out and wills himself to achieve them. Our fifth runner is Alan Holdheide. Uh, he's a senior. He went. He started his freshman year. He never ran a junior high. And Alan has a lot of stuff he's got to balance his time with. He's one of the top pole vaulters in the state. And he sprints, too, and he's a distance runner. So it's pretty amazing to see him balance his time between those three and be successful in all three of them. And then uh, Gavin Schulte has been running number six for us this year. He's a sophomore. Uh, he went out in eighth grade, and he's improved drastically um, all all three years. Uh, I think the other day I, he beat his junior high two-mile time in the 5K, or his first junior high time in the 5K, so that was pretty crazy, I thought. And then uh, Colin uh, Luthman, he's a junior. Uh, he's sort of Mr. Consistent for us. Uh, we can always count on Colin to be really consistent, and you always need a guy like that on your cross-country team. Who you know what you're going to get out of him. Tom, uh, listen, you guys run at 11 a.m. Saturday morning, uh, so I'd assume you guys are heading over Friday night uh, or Friday sometime. Your girls actually run at 1.30 as well uh, on Saturday, of course. Um, tell us a little bit about the upcoming itinerary and what you've got planned uh, for Friday. Yeah, so Friday we've got a busy schedule um, First thing in the morning, we're going to sign uh, pictures for the uh, elementary kids, which is pretty cool because, like, when I was in elementary, I don't ever remember seeing, you know, cross-country being exposed to that sport. And I think it's good to expose the younger kids to that sport, so hopefully uh, they'll be they'll come out and when they get in junior high and high school. And then uh, we're going to have a clap out and then drive to the course, uh, eat that night and get rested. And then I think uh, on Saturday morning, I think we're all going up same time um before the 11 o'clock race all right well listen um you know uh the, the rest of the season we've got one more question here for you before we move on uh let's talk about those green uniforms uh we had a fish report uh a tweet went out there and said why the green uniforms could you give us a little bit of insight on what's up with those green uniforms and uh what uh what uh, that leads with the redskin cross-country team yeah, so um, they got us those uniforms because of the big meets. There's a lot of teams in uh, red and black, 
and sort of hard to tell us apart. So they got the green so the, uh, you know, parents and the coaches could see us. And they've been really cool at the big meets, I think. And in terms of um, whether we're going to wear them uh, next week I or this week, I don't really know. Uh, that's been definitely a co- topic of conversation among our team of whether we're wearing the greens or not on Saturday. So I, I don't know. All right, they're going to leave us in suspense on that All one, right. Ken. But, hey, yep. t- Tom, we got one more question for you before we let you go. But uh, you've been running for Fort Laramie now for a lot of years. As a matter of fact, I think we got a picture we want to bring up on our monitor of you running back in 2012. So you were back in junior high uh, at that time. And, uh, uh, you know, like I said, it's been a lot of years. This is your last race coming up this Saturday. Uh, have you thought about the, the, your, this being your last race or any thoughts on, on uh, what this has all meant to you these, these last four years, six years, actually? Yeah. Uh, cross country has been something I've put a lot of time into, and it really means a lot to me. And the fact that this is my last race is pretty sad, honestly. But I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, if you had told me in junior high that I'd be on a team that has a shot to win the state title, I thought you were crazy. And now here we are. And I think we have a good shot. So I'm just really excited and blessed that um, we're going to have that opportunity on Saturday. Well, listen, Tom, uh, from Fish Report Live, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, you've worked really hard your whole career. I've always enjoyed watching you run. And uh, best of luck to you guys and the rest of your team on uh, Saturday over there at Hebron. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks, All right. Tom. And that was Fort Army senior Tom Ballas. And, uh, Ken, like you said, uh, they have a, a shot. And like he said, they're, they're, they're right up there with the, the contenders. What do you think? The, the Redskins got a shot to win it. Well, Craig, they're definitely in the talks. You know, anytime you go into the state cross-country meet, uh, you look at the championship race, uh, it all is going to boil down to who can, you know, who can run the unexpected time of your top seven kids that, you know, who, who can really pull something off dramatic. Uh, you know, Craig, they're definitely a top five team in the state of Ohio. I would say they're probably definitely a top three team in the state. Uh, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas is very good. Maplewood is very good. And Fort Lormie is very good. So I would say, you know, it's going to be one of them three teams probably in that type of order. But uh, we'll have to see what happens on uh, Saturday. I agree with you. It, it usually comes down to that. That fourth and fifth runner, he mentioned Noah Siegel and, and Alan Hold Heidi, and uh, not to put any pressure on those two guys, but uh, for any team, you know, your fifth, fourth and fifth runners, how well they do usually determines how you, you finish there. So, all right, well, listen, I think we're going to go commercial free tonight. We got an action packed night, so uh, the heck with the commercial tonight. Let's get right into the girls' action, Ken. And uh, again, focusing on Division Three, let's talk about the girls. What local teams are we watching? What local individuals are we watching? Well, Craig, from a team standpoint, of course, you got to start with the um, uh, the Minster Wildcats. You know, they've been ranked number one in the state of Ohio all year. Uh, you know, they're definitely coming in probably as the team to beat, Craig. Uh, uh, you've got St. Henry's got a really nice team. The Covington, Rushi, and Fort Lormy and West Liberty girls teams all out of the Troy region, Craig. They've been top four in the uh, in the district tournament. They were also top four in the regional race. So, you know, look for them also to be very competitive as well. Uh, from an individual standpoint, Craig, uh, we got Elena O'Leary from Lehman. We've got Kelsey Brorin from Marion Local, Lorenzo Savini from Miami East, and also from Miami East, we've got Maria Ewing from Arcanum, Craig, um, Macy Bradshaw, and Brad and uh, from Bradford, Carmen Nepp. You know, we've seen Carmen run several races this year, Craig, a very talented young runner over there from Bradford, and, uh, you know, she, she could finish uh, very high. I look for her to probably to make all Ohio. Yeah, you know, tonight our poll question had to do with who has the best conference, and I noticed a lot of MAC, uh, CCC, SCAL teams, and a few OHC teams in there. So, uh, yeah, pretty uh, well represented all those conferences tonight. And, uh, you know, you mentioned those Rushi Raiders. Uh, last night I actually got a chance to sit down with a couple of their seniors, Shea Gubo and Audrey Garrity, and talk about uh, the season. They've been real keys to to uh, Rushi's success this year and uh, have really helped uh, this team this year get into the state meet. So uh, let's, uh, let's see what those two girls had to say with me last night. Fish Report Live here in Studio R tonight with Rushi Seniors, Shea Gubo, and Audrey Garrity. And these girls are getting ready to run their last races ever for the Blue and Gold. And, and the reason I say the last races ever is because it's a state meet this week and this Saturday over in Hebron. And uh, I guess congratulations, first of all, for that, girls. Quite an accomplishment. And uh, Shea, actually not your first state meet, is it? No, it is not. This is my third. I was an alternate my freshman year. And then I ran sophomore, junior, and then this year. So... 
exciting. <laughs> I feel like I've been watching you run forever. You know, I remember when you were a county champ back in junior high, and you've run on some pretty great Rushi teams these last four years. Uh, how has your senior year gone compared to, to those other years? We definitely lost a lot of talent over uh, the past couple of years. We had girls like Emily Borchers and Claudia Monin and Molly and Lauren, you know. And uh, so we were a bit of a younger team this year, but uh, it was it's fun to like teach the younger girls like all the traditions we have and just stuff like that. We just you just kind of pass it on like those older girls did to us. All right, Audrey, I feel like you're kind of the newcomer of the group, and that's because you've just been running for two years, even though you're a senior. And that's because prior to your junior year, you actually played volleyball. I understand. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Well, th we compare, I guess, or summarize these last two years and uh, what cross country's meant to you. Okay, well, I stopped playing volleyball my sophomore year. I joined my junior year, obviously, and I've loved it ever since. And um, when people ask me if I enjoy the sport, I tell them that it was one of the best decisions in my life. Well, I've really enjoyed watching you mature as a runner these last couple years. And, and just this year, you know, you actually went from uh, a number five runner on Rushi's team. I know back during the West Milton meet, you ran as the number five runner to just a couple weeks ago at the district meet, you were the number one runner. So how, how have you been able to improve this season? What, what's led you to improve so much? Well, that, or my first year of cross, I had no idea what to expect at all with the workouts and practice or the courses because the first 5K that I ever ran was the Rishi Raider running 5K. <laughs> and so my second year was a lot better because I knew what to expect. I knew how hard the workouts were, and I ran most of the courses. And another thing that helped me improve would be the teammate, my teammates because if I didn't have them by my side, I would not be where I am today <laughs> because – if they're either running beside me or running in front of me, they push me to run faster and be a better runner. All right, and Shay, you know, I know every team has health issues or injuries that they have to deal with, and, and Rushi is no exception. You actually had a little bit of a knee issue here earlier this season. Uh, you know, what happened there? How, how are you doing now? Is the, is the knee better? Yeah, uh, after one of the races that next Monday uh, on our distance run, it just it started to hurt really bad, so I uh, – I got it dry needled and cupped and it fixed it some. I was just careful running on it at county I ran. It hurt. <laughs> but uh I got it dry needled and cupped again and it was good about a day or two after that. So I've been running full bore ever since. And you're good to go for this good, weekend then. Good to go. Hasn't bothered me. So All right, and speaking of this week, Audrey, I know this is your last week of practice, kinda in the middle of the week. What's the attitude right now? Are you loose? I mean, are you serious? What's the vibe? Well, we're, we're pretty pumped and excited because we get to experience this. And the vibe is pretty good because Foss <laughs> is counting on us because he thinks that we can um, get our better time or the best times because the weather is going to be good. It's not going to be too hot and it's not going to be too cold. So it's going to be just perfect. So we're pretty pumped. All right. And leading up to the state meet, Shay, as we said before, you've run at this course before. Uh, explain to me or explain to our viewers out there what that atmosphere is like to run on that course and especially in front of those grandstands with thousands of people yelling. It's it's pretty cool. But to be honest, you don't really notice it until, <laughs> until the last stretch because you're so focused on uh, getting the girls ahead of you or keeping your pace and stuff like that. You try to stay focused. So when you come around that first time before the first mile, the grandstands are there and you can hear it but you don't you don't look up you you're just trying to stay focused but when you come in that last stretch you can just hear everybody screaming they might not be screaming for you but it doesn't matter <laughs> still pretty cool it's though awesome it's awesome all right girls before we let you go i know it's just the fall and you still have winter and spring to go before you graduate from rushi high school but uh what's the plans for after high school audrey i plan on attending the wright state lake campus to major in early childhood education all right how about you shay i am planning if i get accepted into the program to uh go to road state for pta so all right well great stuff girls listen uh, thanks for joining us on fish report live and best of luck this weekend all right, and that was Rushi Sr., Shea Gubo, and Audrey Garrity. A lot of fun to talk to them, Ken. You know, of course, we always pull for the Rushi Raiders here on this show, and we were pulling for them last Saturday at the regional meet. Didn't quite work out for us, but I tell you what, if anybody else could have won that regional meet, I was glad to see it was the Covington Lady Buccaneers. Uh, a lot of fun watching those, those girls this year, and if anyone deserved it, it was certainly them. Last year, they came so close. This year, they got that regional title. And they, of course, are led by senior Anna Dunn, who we're happy to have live on the phone right now. Anna, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. 
Hi, thanks for having me. All right. Well, listen, congratulations uh, on getting to the state meet. Congratulations on your regional championship we just mentioned here uh, last Saturday. So let's talk about that regional championship a little bit, Anna. You know, I know you beat some very good teams in Fort Laramie, Rushi, and West Liberty. That, that victory, was that a goal for yours? for you guys at the beginning of the season? Um, yeah, definitely state was a goal at the beginning of the season. We didn't really think about what place we get at regionals going into it, really, um, until we got closer and saw the rankings and how they were how they were looking. But um, especially getting second place last year, it was like the icing on the cake to like get first this year because <laughs> it was so, so close last year. And just getting first this year, we got like a – it was the first time in Covington history – the um, Covington girls have done done that, so it was super exciting when that happened. And just um, getting the state was the goal. So, I mean, getting first place to regionals was icing on the cake for sure. All right. Well, listen, most of our viewers probably don't know this, but uh, I believe you've battled an injury uh, for most of the season. And, and uh, you know, you started out the year, I heard that you were you were running every other race. So what exactly was your injury? Uh, how have you dealt with it? And uh, how are you feeling heading to the state meet this weekend? Well, like, I was training all summer, like, really hard, probably too hard, which is what resulted in the injury, but, and then two weeks, really, before the first race, about, um, I had this tight pain in my hip, and it hurt to um, run, and hurt to walk, and so I I knew that I had to go in and get it checked out, and uh, a couple of opinions were given, and a couple of them said, well, maybe you're going to have to have surgery, and I'm like, okay, this is too intense for me, but... Uh, we went for the therapy route, actually, and um, it turns out to be just a muscle thing. I strained it. I was overworking it. And um, so I've been going to therapy throughout the season, like once a week about, and it kind of healed itself on its own. Like, I'm so lucky to be able to be running in this state. Me, I didn't even know if I was going to be running at all this year. So I took it easy for a couple weeks, lowered my mileage, and everything worked out in the end. I'm feeling great going into the state me, and I'm just super thankful. Hi, Anna. This is Ken. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your career in general. I've watched you run for several years. Uh, you've gradually improved year after year. What are some of the keys that have made Anna Dunn a better cross-country runner uh, coming in and finishing up your senior year? Um, I'd say definitely consistency over the years has, has been a key. Um, you know, working up the mileage from your freshman year, running not just during the season, but during the summer and during the winter, um, doing all the miles outside of uh, the regular season definitely definitely has helped. It has made me mature as a runner. And also, you have to love running. If you don't love running, you're not really going to want to improve. And I have like such a passion for running. Me, personally, knowing that getting those times down is just, um, something that is not just numbers to me. It makes me happy as an individual, and I think that that has really helped me progress over the years. Anna, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the young talent you've got on this Buccaneer team, uh, some really nice young runners over there. Uh, tell us who else on your team uh, will be very uh, important uh, for you guys as you run the, the state meet this weekend. Oh, yeah, we got uh, three juniors this year, and they are Emma Dammeyer and Kelsey Deisinger and Danielle Alexander. And Danielle actually um, didn't get to run in the state meet last year because she got sick. So I'm super, super glad that we made it again this year so she has another chance to run there. But um, the other two have already ran in the state meet. Then we have uh, three sophomores. We have Chelsea Ford, Paige Beringer, and Ashlyn Plessinger. And... The only person that hasn't ran at the state meet is Chelsea Ford. Then we have one freshman who is our alternate named Alexis Meyer. So we get some, some young boy running on that state course. It'll be, it'll be good for the years to come. Absolutely. It's always good to gain experience there. Let's talk a little bit about the guys that, uh, that lead your team, and that's your coaching staff. Uh, you've got the head coach over there, Josh Long. He's done a great job with the Buccaneer program. But uh, his assistant over there is a guy that's extremely close to your heart. And that happens to be your dad, Steve Dunn. Tell us a little bit about what it's like running for dad and how he's helped improve the program. Um, it's great running for my dad. I mean, some people would think that it's a lot more pressure, but honestly, I, it does, it's not any pressure at all. It's, it's great knowing that he's there to support me and he, he can see inside of the practices and can, can work on me better knowing what I'm doing there and not just from what I'm saying 
or he he just knows how to guide me and both of the coaches do a great job of making the cross country team feel more like a family and I'm just so thankful for it and I I'm going to be really sad to leave it after this year. All right, Anna, listen, last question before we let you go. Here at Fish Report Live, we love to find out what our senior athletes are doing after they graduate. So we're going to ask you, have you made any plans yet, and will it include running by any chance? I'm definitely going to continue running in college. I've looked at a few places, and uh, one of them is Wright State, and my brother actually already runs for them, and he's having great success there, and I really like their coach. So we'll see. I'm definitely looking into that, and then, I mean, for the non-running side, I'm going to probably major in marketing, but no one cares about that. We just care about the running, so I'm just <laughs> definitely continuing that. Well, this weekend, Anna, for sure, one thing that's very important, and that is the running. So uh, here on Fish mm -hmm. Report, uh, we wish you the, and the Buccaneers the best of luck. Uh, you've had a great career over there at Covington, and, uh, you know, enjoy it. Uh, have a lot of fun as you run by those grandstands and as you finish up that last 100-meter uh, dash down through that uh, shoot uh, just uh, look up there, enjoy every moment of it, and, and uh, just be uh, thankful you've had this opportunity. I will. I will for sure. All right. Thanks for being on thanks, our show Anna. tonight. Thanks again for having me. Yep. All right. That was Covington senior Anna Dunn. And, uh, Ken, she, like you said, you've, you've been watching her for a number of years. I have as well. And, and it couldn't happen to a, a better person. No, absolutely, Craig. Very humble. Uh, great kid. Uh, good student. And, uh, you know, uh, like you said, uh, uh, great uh, just to have her healthy and to be able to participate. Like, you, like she said, she didn't even know if she was going to be able to run it this year or not. And here she is running uh, at the state meet. All right, well, listen, let's go back to the sound room and check in with the guys. Ken, I know we've loved talking cross country tonight, but there's some other sports going on, including some regional volleyball tonight, some big games. Big so, game, uh, big let's game. Let's check in with, uh, yeah, T TK, what's going on with regional volleyball tonight? All right, tonight we had the uh, D4 regional volleyball down in Troy. Uh, New Bremen uh, took on Fort Marmee and beat them in three. Uh, and then the second game was Lehman against Jackson Center. Jackson Center also won in three, so that matches up. New Bremen against Jackson Center. That will be this Saturday at 2 o'clock at Troy again. Uh, that's to get out of Troy and head to the state tournament. The last time these two met during the season, it was a 3-2 match, which Jackson took away as the winner. So it promises to be another very good match down there this Saturday. So 2 o'clock, if you're not going to go watch cross country, go watch some uh, really good volleyball in Troy. The D3 region, uh, tomorrow night, Thursday night, um, we've got Anna against Utica, so our SEAL uh, team, Anna, and then also other locals, we've got Miami East taking on Versailles, so uh, two more nice matches tomorrow night in the D3 rank, so uh, that about wraps up the volleyball going into the weekend. Yeah, a lot of fun there, a lot of good, uh, a couple good games. It's going to be a great Division Four regional championship. You know, those two have been, Jackson Center and New Bremen have been the two best teams all year, Craig. Uh, of course, uh, you know, Jackson Center defending state champs, currently undefeated, and, and then you check New Bremen there. Uh, great game the last time the two teams played, so uh, should be a great contest. With uh, University of Michigan commit Paige Jones, of Absolutely. course, and uh, she's Absolutely. a lot of fun to watch. Heavy D, listen, we got about 15 seconds, and I know the football playoff started this Friday, or coming up this Friday night, so in 15 seconds, can you, well, 10 seconds now, can you run <laughs> down everything that's going to happen this Friday night? I cannot, but it's going to be a little chill in the air, Friday night lights, um, everybody's lacing it up. Uh, a lot of good teams going head to head this week. I'll tell you what, Craig. Let's give an update next week on the show on how everybody did tonight. That's a deal. That's, That's a, deal. a great deal. And last week on the show, I forgot to go back to the poll question, so we never gave our viewers the answer on the poll question tonight. I'm not going to forget. So, Ken, read it again real quick, and we'll have TK give us well, some results. I, I know our big listener over there in Fort Laramie was upset we didn't <laughs> give the answer, Craig, but uh, we heard about it from him. But anyways, tonight's poll question was which conference. Had the best combination of boys, girls, cross country teams this year. Was it the CCC, the MAC, the OHC, or the Shelby County League? Telemetrics guys, what did it say back there? Well, I think it's our loyal fan base here in uh, Shelby County and Rushi because it's 88% says the SCAL mm -hmm. is the combined most dominant cross country uh, group. Well, guess, we'll go. Fan. We can go with that. I think we'll all agree with that. I'll agree with that. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll find out this weekend. That's right. All right. Well, listen, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. I do want to say special thanks to our guests, Tom Ballas, Shea Gubo, Audrey Garrity, and Anna Dunn. Uh, Ken, uh, 
are we going to let our viewers know what we got our fall finale coming up next week before we take a couple weeks fall. off? But we got a special guest, don't we? We got a big one lined up for next week, folks. And it's just going to be one interview. That's because we're going to spend a lot of time with this guy, Craig. He happened to be in Rio not too many months ago. And Craig, he walked away with a bronze medal. We're really looking forward to talking to uh, our local own uh, from the CCC from uh, Tri-Village, Clayton Murphy. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be our second Olympian we've ever talked to on the show. (laughs) Absolutely, it will be. So looking forward to talking to Clayton on a show uh, next Wednesday night. Don't miss it. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Uh, For Ken and I and the crew, we'll talk to you next week, same time, same place. Have a great rest of the week, everyone, and good night. Don't need no pull when you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish.